Welcome back to Elden Ring. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at what I'm going to call a secret weapon in the game that you can get early and you can become overpowered with. And this is going to be a follow-up to a recent video I did on the channel. That video talking about dealing insane bleed damage with a certain weapon. That weapon was the Beastman's Curved Sword. And in order to obtain that one, you need to make your way to Crumbling Farum Azula. So what I've done is a little bit of digging around and I found similar weapons to the Beastman's Curved Swords but they are obtained much, much earlier in the game. So just quickly before we get into this one, if you're not currently subbed to the channel, make sure you do sub turn notifications on. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like. All support is greatly appreciated. And if you want to support me further as a creator, then check out the links in the description. And let's get into it. So the weapons we are going to be taking a look at, or the weapon, is the Bandit's Curved Sword. I have two of them. They're plus 24. I'm quite a high level, 194. But you don't need to be this level, you don't need to run the four talismans I'm running, even though I don't run gold scarab when I'm killing enemies. You don't have to have anything specific, just make sure you get your hands on the weapon itself and work your way up to something like this. So I'm running these in dual wield, I've got two of them, and I have seppuku on both of them. You'll see at the bottom I have a blood loss build up of 108, and you'll also see that because they're plus 24, I've got a physical of 237 and a bonus of 195. They mainly scale off dexterity, but I would recommend running these in a bleed build because of how fast you can proc bleed. And what I'm going to do, because this is focusing on the weapon, I'm going to give you some tips on how to get this weapon faster, because it does require farming. If you would like a better description on how to run a build with weapons like these, then check out the other video. I'll leave a link in the description and in the pinned comment. So, comparing the Beastman's Curved Sword to the Bandits, for the Beastman you need to go to the Crumbling Faramazula like I mentioned, whereas the Bandit, you just need to come down to the Weeping Peninsula. So from the first step, all you do is you head east, you go past Dragonburnt Ruins, you come down to Agil Lake South, then you make it over the Bridge of Sacrifice, down to Castle Morn Rampart. From there, what you do is you make your way to south of the Lookout Tower, and then you follow this path all the way along, and you come up to the Church of Pilgrimage. When you are at the Church of Pilgrimage, there is going to be one enemy that you are going to kill over and over again, until you get your hands on the Bandit's Curved Sword, and that is this enemy right here. This is a skeleton though, so if we attack and we kill this enemy, they are going to go down, they're going to reform and come back to life. So you can't just kill them straight away. If I do attack them again, it happens with every single skeleton, and they do it time and time again. So whilst they're down, you have to hit them again to finish them off. Well, we can make that easier, and we can make it so that you can kill them straight away. And the way we're going to do that is, if we go from the Weeping Peninsula... If you make your way up to the third church of Marika, so for those of you just starting with the game, make your way to Gatefront, so you start at the first step, you go up to Gatefront, you follow this road down, come up here, follow this all the way along, come to the third church of Marika. When you are at third church of Marika, if you head north, you don't have to go the exact route, but I like jumping out the window, and then you want to come to this section right here, and you will see a spirit spring. But where this spirit spring is, right about where I am now, if you haven't obtained it before now, there will be a teardrop scarab. And upon defeating that scarab, you will receive an Ash of War called Sacred Blade. In order to apply an Ash of War, if you come to Gatefront, and you head east into the ruins, more on the southeast side, if you jump over this wall, Come down these stairs, at the very bottom there is going to be a door. Open the door and inside the chest you will get your whetstone knife. That allows you to sit at any site of grace in the game and apply Ashes of War. So if we go to a site of grace, we'll come over to this one just over here. Upon getting the whetstone knife, you will then see a menu Ashes of War. You go in there, you click on your weapon, and then out of your Ashes of War you apply one. 
and you will see that we have Sacred Blade right there. I've already put this on a weapon. I put it on a just a standard Lord Sworn straight sword, which is this one right here. So if we now go back to the Church of Pilgrimage, now instead of having to attack the skeletons, wait until they go down and then attack them again, if I just lock on and I use Sacred Blade, it deals a lot of damage to these enemies and they die straight away. And that's every single skeleton in the game. So if I come over here and I annoy this one, when he does come up, we'll give him a little chance. If I use a Sacred Blade, they die instantly. There is no reforming and getting back up. But not only that, it works. If you have a look, you've got the beam coming off the sword. If you attack the enemies when the sword is like that, you will also take the skeletons out in one attack. In terms of not having to wait for them to reform or like whilst they're down trying to reform, you're finishing them off. So what you want to do at the Church of Pilgrimage is just keep sitting at the Sight of Grace. Run around here to your left. Use a Sacred Blade on this guy. And just make sure that you check in this pile for any bits of loot like this. This is a human bone shard. However, you will be able to get the Bandit's Curved Sword. It's quite a rare drop. If you're looking for a better drop rate, then there are Silver Pickled Foul Feet. They will look like this in your inventory. They temporarily boost your item discovery. Or you can level up your Arcane stat to do the same thing. Arcane is basically luck, but it also works with bleed builds in Elden Ring. Overall, in terms of farming, and my RNG is typically dreadful, it took me about 15-20 minutes to get both my swords. And that's another great thing about these swords. You are not forced to go into New Game Plus to dual wield them. You'll also see with these that the attribute requirements are really, really low. 11 strength and 13 dex. So as I said, if you're doing this really early in the game, you might not want to sit there for hours and hours if it's going to take that long to get your hands on two of them and dual wield, then progress far enough to get any Ash of War that's going to apply bleed and all that sort of stuff. So you will eventually over time work on getting these weapons built up. But when you do and you pair it with all the talismans, the raptors armor, because this armor piece that I'm wearing, the chest, raptors black feathers. If I go in and show you the description, you'll see at the bottom of the second paragraph, it says strengthens jump attacks. So anytime you jump, you're dealing extra damage and you're going to be jumping a lot with these weapons. They are very light. They only weigh five each. So you're not going to have to run any talismans or anything like that. You're not going to have to like level up your endurance loads to dual wield these. And because I'm running dual wield seppuku, if we come over to the isolated merchant shack, which is in Kalid, if I hold down my Y button, so it'd be triangle on a PlayStation controller, and then I press left bumper, it's going to two hand my off hand weapon. So if I press my left trigger and use seppuku, that's going to proc bleed on the first one. Then I switch back over to dual wield by holding down Y and pressing right bumper. And now I have both of them with seppuku proct. So if I come over to this enemy here, and providing he doesn't insta try and eat me, you can see that blood build up and just how quick he got battered. So if I come over to one of his buddies, seppuku might run out. I mean, if it does, you can see the potential of running these at a high level without any Ashes of War. But if we run over to this guy and we jump and left bumper, 3,000 just from one jumping left bumper attack. Then they've got another friend down here as well who's going to absolutely get destroyed. So if I jump and do a right trigger, it's only 1,800. But then I can finish it off. I mean, one of my seppukus has run out. Both of them have run out and I'm still getting 2400 and the fucking free headbutt off the guy. <laughs> he's, he's almost eaten me. Okay, finish me off. But you'll see the amount of damage you can deal. We're dealing like 
between 2,800 and 3,500 per jumping left bumper attack because it does a couple of slashes. And if you run it with talismans that are going to, I think it's Rotten Winged Sword Insignia, it's going to greatly increase or raise your attack power. If we have a look at it quick, it will greatly raise your attack power with successive attacks. So because you're jumping and pressing your left bumper and doing multiple attacks, and you even get a double slash just from your left bumper, and it's a four hit combo as well, you're going to increase your attack power and deal more damage over time. So the more hits you're laying into enemies, the higher the damage you're dealing. So these are, like, I'm going to say they're your best option for an early game bleed build. Like, if you grab two of these, or even one of them, and run something in your offhand, like a seal, or, like, literally anything, another weapon, a shield, whatever you want, if you just get your hand on one of these bandits' curved swords, they are fantastic weapons. And as I said, all you've got to do is come down to the Church of Pilgrimage in the Weeping Peninsula, and to get there, you don't have to take on any combat whatsoever. You've just got to travel through the Sites of Grace. Get your hands on Sacred Blade. Equip that to a random weapon. Keep taking down that skeleton. I believe Sacred Blade, even on an incredibly low-leveled, like, straight sword or whatever weapon you want to apply it to, I believe the extra damage from Sacred Blade will actually let you take down that skeleton in one hit regardless. So it's all about your RNG, based on your arcane, running the silver pickled fell feet, all that sort of stuff. And once you've got the weapon, I mean, you've seen just how good they are. Dealing like 3,500 damage with Seppuku procced. You don't have to proc it on both, it's just, it looks really cool. But I think these are absolutely amazing weapons. I strongly recommend getting your hands on them. And what we're going to do is wrap the video up there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah.